Many people have heard of the ancient book known as the Holy Bible. But few are aware of the ancient Mediterranean seaport from where the Bible gets its name, Byblos, said to be built by the god Kronos or Saturn as the first city in Phoenicia, according to the ancient Phoenician author Sanchuniathon. The Phoenician city of Byblos was important for the export of papyrus from Egypt to Greece. Byblos is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, having first been occupied between 8,800 BC and 7,000 BC. The Phoenicians originally came from what is modern-day Lebanon. They were organized into city-states. They soon became outstanding sailors and astute traders, indeed the very best. They set up ports and founded colonies, built warehouses, and created a network of routes that touched on neighboring countries such as Egypt, Greece, the Magna Graecia, and Carthage in North Africa. Then they went on to reach Sardinia, the Mediterranean and Atlantic coasts of Spain, and farther south, along the coast as far as Senegal, and north to England and Ireland. It was the discovery of this sarcophagus of the Phoenician king Ahiram, which dates back to the 13th century BC, that enabled archaeologists to understand the reasons for such great organizational skills. Engraved on the sarcophagus is the most ancient example of writing in alphabet form. It is composed of letters and not hieroglyphics. The Phoenicians were the first to invent an alphabet, a factor that proved indispensable in establishing their great trading network. We can get an idea of how extraordinary this innovation was from this comparison. On the right, we see two Egyptian hieroglyphics, and on the left, two letters from the Phoenician alphabet, an M and an H. By assembling these letters, the reader now didn't have to interpret a concept represented by a hieroglyphic or picture. He had a specific code that always remained the same and had the same meaning for whomever was reading it. In the Hellenistic period, the city of Baalbek was known as Heliopolis, City of the Sun. By studying the meaning of these swastikas and other evidence, such as the different colors of columns at this site, Archaeologists discovered that the enormous temple that dominated the city was dedicated to the sun god after which the city was named. In the Bible, Ezekiel mentions that the Phoenician city of Byblus, which also lies in Lebanon, was the biggest naval shipyard in ancient times. These precious bronze statues covered in gold leaf have a strange headdress. It is a libad, which is typical of the Phoenicians. The statues have been found in great quantities in Byblus. They were votive objects used to invoke the favor of the gods. They were found at one of the most important places of worship for the Phoenician religion, the Temple of the Obelisks. There are a lot of fraternal organizations that are known for wearing fezes, like the Shriners, the fez, the national headdress of the Moors since remote antiquity, has been hailed as an object of respect and honor. Symbolically, and at times literally, the person wearing the fez should possess high knowledge and power. In Turkey and other parts of the Mediterranean, the fez is known as a tarbush. In ancient Canaan, or Phoenicia, the conical fez is known as the henin. This type of fez was also used by the ancient order of Magi. In modern day cinema, magicians and wizards are seen wearing the conical fez. In the old elementary school days, if you acted up, you were told to sit in the corner and a dunce hat was placed atop your head. This dunce hat was the fez and it was used to reform the child's mind and bring it back to knowledge, wisdom, and a certain maturity. The fez worn by the modern Moors is red in color. It's also worn by 32nd degree Freemasons in the house of the shrine. I am Lucifer. Okay, define Lucifer for me. 
pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Luc mm -hmm. Say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the Internet. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach, is that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. <clears throat> see, this is what a Mason confesses, is that Lucifer is light. That said, the conical hat, the fez, represents royalty or high dignity in Mexico, as the Aztec knew it as the Kapili. The Assyrian kings of Mesopotamia, as well as the eastern island statues, are depicted with fezes adorned with an attachment in the middle. The Assyrian kings wore various forms of the fez, small, medium, and large in height, and all have an attachment in the middle with a tassel strapped attached to the bottom of the back of the fez. The modern day fez comes in many sizes also and has an attachment at the center top where the tassel is connected. The same fez in the American pantheon simply becomes the graduation cap geometrically speaking. The fez hat was first introduced into Europe and the West by the Cretans and has been worn by various Abrahamic priesthoods over the last few thousand years, as well as newly emancipated slaves since the time of ancient Rome. The island of Crete has been known by various names over the course of history, like Arcadia, Kaftor, Candia, Minoa, Phoenicia, Phrygia, among others. And the people of Crete have been called Cretans, Minoans, Philistines, Jews, Hellenes, Phoenicians, and the Sea Peoples, just to name a few. It was long time ago from the Phoenician and the Pharaohs, from the Phoenician with the Greek people. And you have more than 17 cultures, started from the Stone Age, Phoenician, Amori, Hyksos, Assyrian, Babylonian, Persian, Greek, Roman, Byzantine, Arabs, Crusaders, Mameluk, English, Ottoman, Afrika. Also called the Red Liberty Cap, it was an integral part of the American culture and symbology in the 19th century and is seen in many places in the United States Capitol. The Red Cap of Liberty appears as headgear of the goddess Columbia, who in turn was visualized as a goddess-like female national personification of the United States and of Liberty herself. The Red Liberty Cap and its association with the President of the United States dates back to our first Freemasonic president, George Washington, who we can see immortalized in the U.S. Capitol building, Rotunda, seated with a sword next to Lady Liberty. The U.S. Army has, since 1778, utilized a war official seal, in which the motto, This Wheel Defend, is displayed directly over a red cap on an upturned sword. Thank you for watching this presentation. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an independent anthropologist. Please share this video if you learned something today. I rely on word of mouth and greatly appreciate the positive reviews, comments, and would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel to be notified of new video uploads. Thank you to those who have been supporting me through Atlantean Gardens, the nonprofit organization that disseminates my work. Please continue pursuing truth no matter where it leads and I will see you next time.